Hey everybody, welcome to the Dynasty Pros Weekend Warm Up. I am Brendan Booth at Big Bone at FFB with my co-host as every week, Mike Grindberg at FF Connect ninety nine. We're playing each other in our Dynasty Pros Devi League this week. It's scary to me. Then I hit the wrong button. Uh, grab yourself an adult beverage. Today we're drinking Charles Goodnight Bourbon. It's from right here in beautiful Northern California where it's 60 degrees and I'm sitting here in my studio room with the windows open and the slider open and it's gorgeous. Hopefully in a monogram glass. How are you doing, Mike? Well, I do not have my windows open because my window this morning was frosted up and I had about an inch of snow on the ground so things are changing up here in canada so yeah yeah so there's a difference between where the 49ers play and where the blue bombers play exactly yeah quite the difference if you guys aren't familiar with the winnipeg blue bombers of the canadian football league they're about to win the gray cup thanks to university of california golden bear legend kenny lawler he's the man up here um, I love him so much. Yeah, yeah, he's a stud. Hopefully All right, he can get out of some of his legal trouble, but we'll see about that. Oh, I didn't know about that. All right, everybody, remember to like, comment, share. Well, like this video, comment on it to get the algorithm going. Share it with everybody that you know in the fantasy football community, and hit the bell so that you're notified every time we get a new video up every week. And with that, go ahead and kick it off, Mike. Okay, well, I got some news here. I'm sure you guys can see my new Dynasty Pros hoodie. Uh, that's that's news gorgeous. Of the week. Yeah, it came in the mail. Well. Yeah, it came in the mail. Super good price. Uh, I think it was 35 bucks. so you're crazy not to get one. And can I find sharp, one so. in my mail? Uh, yeah, maybe I'll send you one out. Maybe if you. you win me this week, if you beat me this week, maybe there will be one in the mail. How about that? That's a good bet. Let's bet. Uh, no, that's not a good bet because you're, <laughs> you're projected to kick the shit out of me. Um, how about if I lose <laughs> as a consequence? No. <laughs> All right. What's happening with injuries and player news and stuff? Well, first, did you see uh, Brittany and Taylor's new handshake? Damn, that was smooth. Was it? What Is do you it think? Like, like Maverick and Goose, like, stah, stah. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. So yeah. what do you think? Now that we've had a new besties, do you think we can maybe get a handshake like that? What do you think? Oh, we could totally do something where we're like. But then the new thing, and you even have, like, Uber Christian Derek Carr finishing with. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit more freelance up here in Canada. Oh no, we're like I'm in California. We yeah. are fully fully medicinal and legal. Yeah. All right, man. Well, injury reporting looking like the NFL is changing the way they're doing things with that mishap with the Bajan situation this weekend. Like, like it's good for us as fantasy managers if they can, you know, narrow down and crack in on that uh the way they report injuries moving forward. We talked about that a couple times, so hopefully that can they can clean that up in the future. That was horrible for a lot of people, yeah, including myself. Yeah. I know. Kyler Murray is back to practice. He's got an outside shot to play this week, but it's looking more like week nine. He will make his 2023 debut for the Cardinals. Many thought he wouldn't even play at all this year. Uh, He's not even going to look like he's playing with a knee brace either. So huge news for Cardinal fans and potentially the future of this, you know, team. Yeah. Somebody floated today on Twitter. What about Lincoln Riley and Kyler Murray reuniting in Las Vegas next year? And I was like, no, <laughs> I don't mind Kyler Murray in fantasy. He's never a target of mine. But this year, I, you know, took some pup flyers on him just because he's, you know, if he play, is healthy for six weeks, he's going to put up some numbers. But I don't want him on my IRL team. Not in real life. Not Kyler Murray. I don't like short quarterbacks. Yeah, I mean, people had the same reservations with uh, Bryce Young that, 
you know, people are looking at that right now. He's obviously a bit smaller than Kyler, but, you know, some same comparisons there where I don't like his profile now moving forward either. I mean, I would like him a lot more if Frank Reich wasn't his head coach. Yeah, fair enough. No buys this week. Woo! Not sure why. I just have no idea why there's zero buys, but we had six last week. Just doesn't make sense. Make it's because it they're sense. all in Devi. <laughs> yeah, on your squad. Yeah, all Pac-12. Pac-12 is like everybody's off in the Pac-12, and that's mostly who I draft because that's, you know, what you know. So, yeah, they're all – and there's a lot of SEC. Arkansas is off. LSU's off. Like, they're – I mean, my – most of my players are are on by and Debbie, which is, you know, it's just last week revisited, but with college players. Yay. Well, at least you have them all in one week. I've had like three weeks in a row in Debbie where I would just been decimated with buys and injuries. So now the future is looking good for me. So hopefully I can bounce back. Nice. All right. Now with new injuries for the week. Kenneth Walker with a calf and Tyler Lockett with a hamstring. Both didn't practice for the second straight day. The Seahawks are a banged up team right now. Not sure either of these guys will play. It is looking like uh, DK Metcalf will be back this week. The team just can't feel the f- like a full lineup that's healthy. Just sucks. Neither can I. <laughs> yeah, well, welcome to <laughs> fantasy football. Um, surprise one here. Uh, it was, it was a late one. Deontay Johnson just propped up on the injury report late this afternoon, Thursday. Okay. So yeah. that's not a really good day for that to come. Uh, did not practice with a hamstring injury coming off of IR. He just played his first game. Not great. Wheels up for George Pickens. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. All right. Well, Brock Purdy in concussion protocol after having symptoms uh, following the Monday nighter. Looks like Sam Darnold will make the start this week as I have my reservations of Purdy being able to clear protocol in time. What do you think, Brendan? Can Darnold be a replacement for those Purdy managers? I mean, I've always been an advocate for quarterbacks taking five years to hold the clipboard, not starting right away. Sam Darnold is in year six or seven, I believe. So he's right in that perfect uh, window to like come out and, you know, like win a, an MVP like Rich Gannon if he gets the, the proper opportunity. Um, but I have zero faith in Sam Darnold, but the 49ers offense is pretty, you know, like you can you can function pretty well there, even if you're not that great. Um, but I know that somebody with the initials KS in Santa Clara, California is kind of regretting that he doesn't have Trey Lance to kick around anymore because he'd love to do that this weekend. You think so? Hey, I don't know. I beg to differ. I, 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 from what I hear and from all the reports that I'm hearing is that they really like Sam Darnold and you know, this actually could be a changing of the guard. Who knows? Like Purdy might be in the, like that there's nothing them keeping them, with him at this stage so what if what, what if sam Darnold shows up pretty he, pretty will have the job once it comes back it's, I know. it's a I know. it's a garoppolo hoyer situation i mean it's like once he comes back like he he's got it but you know i'm not i'm not starting darnold so that's all good okay that's what i want to know okay uh tyreek hill fantasy manager took a huge scare when hill was a dnp on wednesday you can breathe a sign of relief. Hill managed to return to practice today, uh, but it was on limited basis. I guess it was a designation. But from what I saw and what I heard, he didn't appear to be limited. Uh, he should be a go this week. What do you think? I mean, Tyreek is a full go all the time. Even if he gets injured in game, he still manages to finish it. I don't know. Like, he's a superhero. He's a superhero. And I regret that I had to trade him away in my dynasty league just because I need to, you know, retool. And I, I got a pretty, pretty big package. Um, also, I got a pretty big package for him. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, it's the one guy that I, <coughs> I'm sad to see go because he is, he's an absolute superhero. Um, Jerome Ford, high ankle sprain. 
missing one to two weeks, maybe longer. Another tough blow for the Browns in their RB room. Looks like it was a high ankle sprain, but a low grade one. This should sideline for for at least one week, maybe longer. He was seen in a walking boot. I'm hopeful, but not counting on seeing him back in week nine when they face the Arizona Cardinals. Look for Kareem, Kareem Hunt to pick up extra carries with waiver wire darling Pierre Strong sprinkled in as well. Could be looking at a 60-40 split between the two uh, while Ford is out. But I we mean, when Pierre Strong came in the game, late in the game there, when uh, when when Ford was out, he actually out snapped uh hunt in that in that last bit of the game so be interesting to see how that shakes out uh this week with uh with ford out what do you think yeah and i love pierre strong i liked him in new england i was really surprised when they let him go and not uh kevin harris i guess they felt with him and Ramondre he was kind of redundant but i pierre strong has always been kind of like on my radar and i mean kareem hunt daryl henderson what are we doing like what is with all these septuagenarian emergency running backs that they're like having to run out there? What is going on NFL? What is with all the, like Jerome Ford is an injury emergency replacement and now he's out too. make it stop. Somebody make it stop. The bleeding has got to stop every week. I know. Well, and it's the running backs too. So that's why it's not, that's smart to be and quarterbacks. Huge. Yeah, I know quarterbacks. Yeah, Three more it's, it's quarterbacks out this week. Insane. Deshaun Watson shoulder. He just was all. He was awful Sunday prior to leaving the game uh, with a suspected concussion. Per Browns head coach Kevin Stefanski, Watson was cleared uh, and was cleared to return, but Stefanski wanted to keep Watson out to protect the franchise quarterback. We later found out it was related to his shoulder. Monday, Browns head coach Stefanski told reporters that Watson was going to undergo further testing on his shoulder. He did not rule out IR stint either. The team actually looks better with P.J. Walker and seems to be playing better in front of him. Perhaps he brings less drama to the table. With Watson out, Walker gets another start this week. What when drama? was the last... When was the last time you made a $240 million mistake and kept your job? So I know that you're a ball player, Mike. I'm a ball player too. Uh, Ball players, that rotator cuff, AC joint, vital. And guess what happens when you injure that? You can't lift up your arm. Well, what do you need to do to throw any kind of ball? You need to be able to lift up your arm. Mm-hmm. If Deshaun Watson has that type of injury the same way Anthony Richardson does, it's not looking good for Deshaun. Invest in PJ Walker. I mean, he, he's he's the best you're going to do in Cleveland at this point, um, unless uh, the UCLA kid can come in, but it doesn't look like they want him to take mm-hmm. over. Dorian Thompson Robinson, I think is his name. Anyway, yeah, PJ, DTR, whatever, whoever. Um, yeah, like gird yourself from Deshaun Watson going to the IR. Do it now. Yeah, and it it does it doesn't look like like Watson can even pay anybody to loosen that arm up, you know. <laughs> you know I mean? A so massage. Christian, yeah, Christian Watson and his knee. If you drafted him and thought your patience was finally paying off, well, think again. Unfortunately, he might be out again this week. Watson is optimistic to play and has been a full participant in practice to start the week, so it's looking like he will be a go. Just putting managers on notice to keep an eye on his status throughout the weekend. Jalen Waddell uh, left Sunday's game against the Eagles in the first half with reports called back spasms. Uh, Waddle did return to the game, a situation worth monitoring, as this is another wide receiver that has a hard time staying healthy and being on the field. Waddle has practiced in limited fashion to start the week, hoping to see him practice in full tomorrow to solidify his status heading into Sunday. Just a guy that just can't stay healthy and could soon be tagged as an injury-prone player, unfortunately. Yeah, and imagine Cedric Wilson and Braxton Berrios leading that Miami Dolphins wide receiver attack and doing good. You got to bring those things up. I love it. 
<laughs> I'm Another all in on Braxton. Yeah, no kidding. I see him in your lineup this week, so I, I want to avoid some some sort of pointed share. <laughs> uh, Luke Musgrave and his ankle uh, appeared to be emerging, but his emergence looks to be put on hold as he went down in week seven with an ankle injury. Hopefully Musgrave avoided the worst scenario and is only dealing with the typical low inversion ankle sprain and would be out the next two games. He is in a walking boat, so it could be more serious than reported. Another, another tough break for the Packers that has had a really hard time keeping their offensive playmakers healthy. Again, as a ball player my entire life, I'm not worried about low ankle sprains. I've done both of my ankles at least four or five, six times playing baseball, playing basketball, playing football, swinging on the rope of a flagpole even. And, you know, I, I even did in a playoff game, I did my own tape job. I was playing first base, rolled my ankle, trying to catch a foul ball. Couldn't stand on it. Walked off the field, took my cleat off, wrapped it in tape real hard, and then got back out there and finished the game. So if it's somebody like Luke Musgrave, he's going to be fine if it's a low ankle sprain. If it's a high ankle sprain, that's a little bit different. Um, different yeah. But yeah, he, he'll he be okay. <coughs> he'll be okay. The, the uh, walking boot is precautionary. He's a million dollar person, so they're going to be as... as careful as they can with him. And then come game day, they'll tape it up and, and he'll be okay. So you think he plays this week? I'm sure. I'm yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wanted to say, I wanted to say certain, but yeah, no, I, I think he will there. I mean, there are certain things that you can play with. A low ankle sprain is one of those. A hamstring pull is a totally different story. A knee sprain is a totally different story. Ankles are more easily stabilized and they they you're you're better off with an ankle sprain than other types of leg injuries calf pulls hamstring pulls mm -hmm. th those typically people remain out but i mean you can you can wrap a ton of medical tape around your ankle and and still play yeah Okay. And, and he's a tight end position too. So it's not like he's going to be needed to make these athletic cuts. And right. What, it, it, he drops from a four, four 40 to a four, eight 40. I mean, yeah, doesn't yeah. really matter. Um, Gerald Everett, another tight end with a quad injury left Sunday's game against the chiefs and didn't return. Everett seemed to be emerging since Mike Williams uh, was injured. Uh, and he's the main red zone target. Now it seemed, Everett was having himself a game. Uh, he went down with three passes, caught uh, for 26 yards and a touchdown. So uh, another big blow to the tight end position because, you know, someone that was starting to emerge and someone you could start, you know, playing, especially with that Mike Williams injury. Hopefully it's not a long absence, if anything, for Gerald Everett. Nope. And he was a streamer anyway. So move on to your next streamer. Spoiler alert. Exactly. So let's go with Dawson Knox with a wrist injury. He needs surgery, possible se uh, season ending. Uh, he was placed on IR today and Dalton Kincaid to the moon. And it looks like tonight he is going off already. Um, just getting in past the halftime. He's already got a touchdown here and a couple of nice long catches. So looking for Dalton Kincaid to continue his emergence now with Knox out for the foreseeable future. Kincaid had his best game of the year last week, earning a 19.2 target share, uh, turned into eight receptions for 75 yards. Uh, it is a sign of things to come, and I am looking at Dalton Kincaid being a top 10 tight end to close out the year. Yeah, rest of the season, he's exactly what we thought he was going to be coming into the in the during the preseason. It's exactly why we drafted him high, and um, you can if you can take that knife through the screen and just stab me in the heart right now because he's going to be the difference in our matchup this week. He will be, and that's okay. That's okay for me, though. I don't mind that. Not um, for me. <laughs> Zach Hurts, another veteran injured tight end, uh, you know, paving way for maybe another youngster to emerge. Uh, he was placed on IR with a quad injury. Trey McBride was already moving past Ertz on the depth chart. And now that further opens the door for McBride to emerge in this offense. McBride was the first tight end off the board in the 2022 NFL draft and has the pedigree to be successful. 
Gladdy is finally getting some traction in Arizona. And now with Kyler maybe coming back, wow, this could be a late season breakout that could turn into a very valuable piece on uh, fantasy teams championships. That's why we play fantasy football, and that's why we scour the waiver wire every week. Trey McBride was totally available the last couple of weeks, and I took took advantage, and then Zach Ertz got hurt. So wheels up on Trey McBride. Let's go. I love it, too. So some older injuries that we got to continue reporting, unfortunately, is uh, Justin Fields projected to return hopefully after this week. Uh, he's got a thumb dislocation. Looks like the Bears will be without Fields for at least this week. This is actually good news for Fields because he did avoid IR. T-bag, as the fantasy life guys call him, uh, the Bears' backup has come in and looked better than the Packers' number one quarterback. Hopefully, Fields can get back in the lineup in week nine. I got love for T-bag. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, Debo Samuel. Caroline fracture in his shoulder. He has been ruled out for week eight. It was Jawan Jennings and not Brandon Ayuk uh, last week, getting the majority of the targets in Debo's absence. Jennings out targeted Ayuk nine to six. Maybe more of the same this week with the Bengals, uh, with Ayuk getting more of the attention from the opposing team's top defenders. I I pretty I feel like Ayuk is is pretty secondary proof. I don't think that he's going to take take last week's down grade in production and allow it to happen. He's he's a guy. He's a dude. Go with Ayuk, especially with Debo Samuel out. It it might have just been some some great opportunities for Juwan and Brock Purdy was you know kind of had his bell rung, but. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that the game plan, especially if it's Sam Darnold, is gonna gonna be to pepper Ayuk and Kittle and hand off a lot to Christian McCaffrey, a lot of like little swing passes to McCaffrey and stuff. So I I wouldn't be worried about the the top targets on the 49ers. And Ayuk does better with Samuel out. So I I would still smash Ayuk this week. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't downplaying Ayuk there, but I was just maybe mentioning the fact that uh, Jennings is maybe somebody to keep your eye out for. Oh, yeah, for, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's good. Uh, yeah, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo projected return week eight. Looks like Jimmy G will be back for the Raiders this week when they play in prime time on Monday Night Football against the Detroit Lions. Are you excited to see your number one QB back in action this week? Oh, he's not my number one QB. We'll no, I'm not. I'm not. I wish he was hurt for more. Um, I mean, I there. I have a little rant about Josh McDaniels later on, and this just adds to it. There's no reason why this team should be doing anything but starting the young guys. We know what Jimmy Garoppolo is. We know that, that he's not going to help the Raiders. Um, I mean, he, he can throw the ball 10 yards. We know that but it completely shuts down the rest of the team. So we saw that in Chicago last week. They got absolutely boat raced and run out of the building against one of the worst teams in football. And if you are looking at teams around you and thinking that they're all the worst teams in football and they beat you, what does that tell you about you? It's the worst because that's like, like even if you get w rid of, you know, Josh McDaniels and like, I heard it on a podcast today. It's like those owners are going to hire another bunch of idiots anyway to run the ship the same way. So it doesn't matter. Like, I'm sorry. It sucks to be a Raider fan, but uh, yeah, it's not looking good. They know they need a quarterback and, 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 and they knew it because they, they picked up Jimmy. Right. So now mm -hmm. like, why not let this kid play and see what right. you got? And, and, and you, you know, you need a quarterback next year. You might as well see what the youngster has and let him, let him roll. And if, if that doesn't pan out, then you know, you're, you're screwed anyway. So you're going to go for a quarterback. Anyhow, you had a, you drafted Aiden O'Connell higher than Brock Purdy was drafted and Aiden O'Connell played at Purdue. He came out of the, he came out of the big, uh, big 10 and, there's no reason not to see what you have with him except for the contract situation with Brock Purdy. 
And the fact that McDaniels wants to go with a guy like Hoyer instead because he's a veteran and that's how they think and blah, blah, blah. But until Kevin O'Connell is the head coach of the Raiders and we have Michael Penix Jr. in the building, um, we're not going to have any any hope. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry about my rant there. I apologize. <laughs> Just wait. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Tannehill projected to return maybe week 10. His uh, same ankle is uh, acting up again. Hearing that it could be a split quarterback tandem for the Titans this week if Tannehill can't go the old Will Levi, Malik Willis for the win, right? I will address that later. Yeah. Uh, one can only hope that Derrick Henry gets moved to the Bills or the Ravens and let that dumpster fire burn in Tennessee opening the window for maybe Tajay Spears to take over that backfield. All my fantasy teams would love to have them split up and take on lead roles on their own. I have two people close to me that were all in on Tajay Spears, and you're one, one of them. <laughs> He's getting close, man. It's, it's, yeah. it's so close. We're there. He, we're on the it, cusp. It reminds me of the situation with the Chan. Um, Everybody knew the talent level that was there, but there were reasons to downgrade. But the Chan, it was his size with Ty J. Spears. It's his um, lack of his a knee structure. Um, yeah. And so most people were, were pretty out on them. But, I mean, late round flyer, paying dividends. Totally. Um, another one here, David Montgomery, not practicing, not expected to play. Uh, it's about time we got to see some Jameer Gibbs. Just took an injury to Monty for that to happen, unfortunately. Looking like Monty will miss this one again. I expect him to be back after the Lions bye in Week 9. Look for another Jameer Gibbs game on Monday night against your Raiders. Yeah, I I mean, he's going to he's gonna be getting a lot of work against Las Vegas. I'm going to spoiler alert. Um, Kyron Williams, high ankle sprain, was placed on IR. Williams uh, went down, we know, on Saturday on that. Uh, Daryl Henderson as their primary backup, you know. Like, of course, everybody saw that one coming. Why not, right? Mm -hmm. And I picked up Daryl Henderson last week as a waiver wire pickup mm -hmm. and turned him into 24-year-old Josh Palmer. Congratulations. Uh, looking like Henderson will be fantasy relevant to at least Williams returns and could have made enough impression to keep a role in that offense when William does come back. I, I did read a very interesting post from at Noah more parties, Noah Hills, who's one of the, the top running back gurus that I follow. He's amazing. And he was high on, Zach Evans in the off season and Brett Coleman was high on Zach Evans in the off season. And I was high on Zach Evans in the off season. And the fact that Zach Evans has stuck around and Sean McVay recognizes the talent that is there, but he doesn't want to ruin the kid tells you all you need to know about Zach Evans and dynasty. Yes. Daryl Henderson has the job right now. But once Zach Evans picks up all the little nuances of being a running back in that system, when to block, when to break out, when to blitz protect, all of those things, which do take a while, Zach Evans is going to be the guy in Los Angeles. You heard it here, folks. Big Brandon's big call ball, man. <laughs> Not the big call of the week, though. Mm, I know. Uh, Daniel Jones again. Uh, thank you, Tyrod Taylor. You made the Giants relevant again. Hopefully when Jones gets back to health, he was able to take some notes when he was off. Um, yesterday, Jones uh, was still not cleared to practice. I am expecting Tyrod Taylor to play another one this week. Looking for another big game from Darren Waller, if that's the case. Yeah, and I mean, we, we know what Waller can do. And if he's got a quarterback that can put the ball in his hands, then he's going to, he's going to do what Darren Waller can do. Okay. Brace with yourself, folks. We're almost through this injury report. Crazy. How many we've gone through tank Dell has practiced in full and should be back in people's lineups. People have forgotten how impactful Dell has been to start the year. 
I'm expecting pretty big numbers from the Texan players this week, uh, other than, of course, Robert Woods, who was ruled out with a foot injury. Bobby Trees is out, so it's Tank Dell is the number two. Roshan Johnson, his concussion has been looming. Too bad Roshan couldn't get back last week because that Deonta Foreman game was really meant for Roshan Johnson. Too bad because that performance could hinder Roshan's value now uh, as he was the number two behind Khalil Herbert when they were all healthy. And now they're, you know, that pretty much clouds that backfield even further. Glad Roshan is back and he should emerge in that backfield because he is the most talented. I'm really hoping he can get out of that protocol. He has practice to start the week, so all signs are pointing like he is going to play. Yeah, I, I've invested in Roshan more than just about any other running back, and I can't wait for his breakout to finally happen. And it should have happened, but it, now he's fully healthy on the backside of Deontay Foreman's complete and total breakout. So we might have to wait a little bit more, just like we waited when we were holding Jer- Jerome Ford, just like we're still waiting with Kenneth Gainwell. The list goes on and on of guys who we know are talented enough. They just don't get the opportunity. Roshan is one of them. And uh, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's go. I'm ready. It just might not be this week. Yeah. I think uh, even if he does get in, you know, they're, I think because of how long that he's been off with that concussion, they're going to ease him in regardless because they're going to see how he takes a couple hits, see how he responds to them and uh, go from there. I think it'll be a, a slower one. If he does play this week, uh, it'll be a slower one, I'm predicted. And then next week it'll be, you know, wheels up for Roshan. Yeah, and especially when Fields comes back, because Fields likes to target Roshan in the passing game, and Deontay Foreman isn't really a receiving back, and we knew that going into the season. But then Khalil Herbert is set to come back in two weeks, I believe. Uh, I think he's had two two weeks off on IR, so this week and next week he's done, he's not playing the following week so week 10 he should be back and then it's just going to be like the standard what chicago had looking forward which is roshan johnson coming in on third downs khalil herbert being the bell cow and or the the two down back and deontay foreman kind of sliding back into his role as an older guy who is totally capable of taking over which we saw last week against vegas but hopefully Roshan can do some things in the next couple of weeks as a third down back, uh, catch some passes if if T Bag that's so amazing if T Bag can can find him, um, yeah. So yeah, let's all hope for Roshan. All so hope for Roshan. last week we had some technical difficulties. We weren't able to get the video up, so. We're not going to do studlies and dudleys this week. Although I had some pretty phenomenal studlies and some really, really sad dudleys, but we won't go into those because uh, I'm going to save face and just start with the starts and sits this week. How, how's that sound? Yeah, let's do the future studlies. And then I don't even know if there's going to be a dudley list next week, but we'll have. Oh, to see. no, not, no, no, no dudleys next week. All right. So my first start is going to be. George Pickens. Most owners are a little skittish at this point with Pickens, given that Deontay Johnson returned. Pickens was targeted eight times against the Rams last week, and that was alongside Deontay. So Johnson missed practice today, and if he's out, expect Pickens to return to the 10, 10 targets he was getting before and against a more favorable matchup in Jacksonville than he had last week in Los Angeles Rams. Not only will Pittsburgh be likely playing from behind, but their pass defense isn't as good as the Rams. Jacksonville is better at stopping the run than the pass, and that should lead to lots of third downs and Kenny Pickett playing catch-up. Pickens is wide receiver 24 on the season, which is exactly where one analyst, who shall remain anonymous, had him projected in the dynasty dilemma that you and I did, Mike. Mike. Mm -hmm. So he should be in your lineup anyway, but expect him to have a good game this week and start him with confidence. Yeah, 
I'm I'm glad you projected the Deontay Johnson injury for that to happen, right? That's, that's I didn't exactly, do that. I just yeah, said George yeah, Pickens was going to be in the exactly. wide receiver 24 com- conversation. Yeah, yeah. That's and all. I said he he could Low be there. Wide if, receiver two. Yeah, yeah. I I didn't say you didn't say it. I, I okay. whatever whatever Brandon. <laughs> we both we both agreed. Yeah, we love it. Yeah, it's good. We're we're we're. We're, we're amical here. This is good. So Jameer Gibbs is my first start of the week versus the Raiders. Uh, he has seen RB1 usage in every game that he has played that David Montgomery did not. Seeing 15% target share with a 68% route participation and has gotten 62% of the rushes for the Lions. Gibbs was questionable and his status last week was in doubt. That injury didn't seem to slow Gibbs down from converting on garbage time posting his best game of the year rushing 11 times for 68 yards a touchdown and adding another 58 yards on nine nine receptions that type of production that many had hoped for for Gibbs when the Lions drafted him so early it's looking like Gibbs will get the keys again to the backfield uh, because Montgomery is doubtful Gibbs should be a safe bet in any game that Monty misses uh, going forward. And now he gets the primetime Monday night matchup against your Las Vegas Raiders, who are not so good against the run, ranking 24th, giving up an average of 129 yards on average a game. Until Monty comes back, Gibbs is a must start for me. What's kind of funny is that the last couple of weeks, both you and I have had the Raiders as streaming defenses. And this week, do not start the Raiders. Start. We can't catch a break. I mean, every week it seems we go against a phenom like Jameer Gibbs or these just astronomical PPR monsters like Deontay Foreman and Tyler Badgett, Ty- Tyson <laughs> Teabag. We just we can't we can't catch a break. All yeah, right, some formidable <laughs> opponents you guys are going up against there. I don't know how many times I've said uh, I've said I'm out on the Ravens backfield in the warm up but it's a lot. That all changes this week. Hallelujah. You might be saying you've been waiting for me to endorse your Ravens running back. But this week I'm on the Gus bus. All aboard. The backfield situation is still a bit muddy but Gus Edwards has settled into the two down role and between the 20s He and Justice Hill each had a 50% snap share last week in the blowout against Detroit. But Gus Bus led the duo in touches. Not only is is Arizona bad at defense, but that badness leads to a rushing funnel. Gus Bus will eat this week. Yeah, I think so too. He is on target. I love it. Love the call. And this week, I am again down with Josh Downs versus the Saints. Over the last three games, Downs has averaged around seven targets per game, bringing in an average of 5.3 receptions and 243 yards, two touchdowns, good for 17.4 PPR points per game. Downs has been averaging at least 70% of the snaps because Indy plays a lot of 11 personnel with Marshawn Lattimore expected to be covering Michael Pittman Jr. for the majority of the day, opening a lot of opportunity for Downs in the slot where it just so happens the Saints are vulnerable there. As per fantasy data points, the Saints funnel targets to the slot at a league high 39%. All signs are pointing at another great week for Josh Downs in week eight. Start him in as a flex with a uh, wide receiver to upside. Yeah, I I think that that is going to be one of the highest scoring games of the week. We're talking in the 70 point range. We're talking Derek Carr throwing for 300 yards. We're talking Minshew throwing for 300 yards. All Saints receivers, all Indy receivers. And it sounded like what you were saying was that Josh Downs is who we thought Alec Pierce was going to be mm-hmm. getting those deep targets and everything. But yeah, I down downs is looking like a, a stud at the moment. A steal. A lot of guys had him high in the draft and he just slid. So that surprised a lot of people, but uh, Minshew's bringing out a lot, of, a lot in him and uh, hopefully they can keep that up. And Mike, you know how I like to be veiled. 
and keep things interesting. And you know how mm. much I love trivia. Guess what defense? A, funnels the pass. B, gives up more passing yards per game than the average. This is going to take a little bit. And mm-hmm. C, will be playing with a huge lead. Okay, that might be a few teams. So I'll, uh, I'll Miami, 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 Miami. Wait, spoiler. So who's? I was going to say also whose colors are teal and orange, but you got it. Uh, and they had their oh, mascot. You asked me a qu- yeah, you asked me a question. They also had their mascot stolen by Ray Finkel. Laces out, Dan. <laughs> it's the Dolphins. You got it. I'm sorry. They play the- <laughs> no, you're good. They play the New England Belichicks this week. Uh, the Patriots wide receiver won this season, leads the receiving core in points, and it's not particularly close. He has 18 targets the last two weeks, has finished his PPR wide receiver 10 and 15 in those two, in those two weeks, and is in a very favorable position this week. Finkel is Einhorn. Einhorn is Finkel. Well, I'm not really ready for a relationship, Lois, but thank you for asking. Hey, maybe I'll give you a, so, a call sometime. Your number's still 911. Kendrick Bourne is the big boned, big call, big ball. I'm going to get that one day. Kendrick Bourne is the big boned, big ball call of the week. Kendrick Bourne, the Bourne identity. I love it, man. That's huge balls there. Those are monstrous. Um, and as far as I remember, did Finkel have a set of balls? Or Yeah. <sighs> Finkel did, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Lois Einhorn did. did. All right. Awesome. Okay. So, Not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. And there are so many other references because, you know, they're playing New England and New England Clam Chowder. Which one is that, the red or the white? <laughs> I can never remember that. Exactly. All right. So my next uh, start. And my last one, if he plays, as he hasn't practiced yet to start the week, which is kind of a shock. So they're still not sure what's going on there with Josh Palmer. But he's coming off a top 12 wide receiver finish against the tough Chiefs defense. Palmer had five receptions for 133 yards and a great showing on Sunday. Palmer was the immediate benefactor, not Quinton Johnson like people had thought it would be, of the season-ending Mike uh, uh, Williams injury. Now with another pass catcher banged up in Gerald Everett, Palmer would get an even bigger bump against the Bears team that is bad against the pass, ranking 29th in the league, giving up an average of 257 yards per game. Palmer is a great flex play and could even move into wide receiver two range rest of season if he's healthy and if he plays this week. So if he does play, I would be starting him for sure. I'm looking up real quick what happened last week with Jacoby Myers. Because coming into this week, uh, Jacoby Myers had 13 targets, 7 receptions, 3.85 yards per target, 7.14 yards per catch. Uh, But he had a touchdown. He had 18 points. He finished his wide receiver 11. Um, Going against the Bears, that's about where I would put Josh Palmer this week, about wide receiver 11. So he's in your top 12. He's definitely in the bottom wide receiver 1 Wide receiver two, especially a flex play. Um, yeah, Josh Josh Palmer can can do big things this week. Agreed. But, what's that you said? On to the sits? Okay. Um, sometimes the end comes quick. There was a time when this receiver that I'm talking about right now was a lock for a top seven finish every year. For the last three seasons, we've all been bamboozled into relying on him like we used to could, and we've been bamboozled again. D Hop has finishes the last two years as wide res- the last two years as wide receiver forty five and wide receiver forty seven. Now I'll grant you that he's dealt with injuries and a suspension, but this season he's again at PPR wide receiver forty seven, and that's averaging eight targets a game. He has a malady now that is far more insidious than being 31 years old, having a pulled hamstring or a knee injury or a steroid suspension. He's on the Titans. 26, 62, 61, 
3885. Those are five of his six weekly finishes this year. He was wide receiver seven against Indy a couple weeks ago, but that's the outlier. I keep saying the Falcons' pass defense is legit, and they keep proving it. They've allowed the fourth fewest yards per game versus the average. Vegas has the Titans as the lowest scoring team this week. The Titans are the third lowest pass offense in the NFL. And that was with Ryan Tannehill, who is not likely to play. Will Levis and Malik Willis will likely split snaps. And Traylon Burks is back. Don't expect anything out of D-Hop this week. Yeah, I mean, that that all, all you needed to say was Will Levis or Malik Willis. Um, <laughs> it's all you really needed to say, but, you know, we I really appreciated that. He really got deep and dug, dug deep into, you know, somebody that made a lot of fantasy managers a lot of money over the years. So it's Don't a, start it's Titans wide receivers this week. Yeah, no kidding. Don't exactly. So my next sit is Hollywood Brown versus the Ravens. I know it's a revenge game for him, but you know, after a surprise start to the season, many teams that face the Cardinals were caught off guard by how efficient that offense has been under Josh Dobbs. Dobbs has been a pleasant surprise for fantasy managers as he has made guys that people were reluctant to draft like Marquise Brown viable in fantasy, uh, leagues unfortunately Dobbs is on the downswing teams have figured him out and the game plan and has cooled off in the last two weeks with that came down Hollywood's productions as well Cardinals get their toughest matchup versus quarterbacks and wide receivers so far this year when they face the Ravens uh that completed completely you know doused that blazing hot Lions uh team to just six points so look for Dobbs and the and Brown to struggle on this one. Yeah, that's I I picked up the Ravens as a streaming defense as often as I could this week because the Cardinals are bad. They're yeah. bad. All right, my next set. I'm gonna need a little drink for this one. Yeah. Okay. I'm privy to the notes, so uh, I I get to see that. It's worth it. This. <clears throat> this hurts my heart. This hurts my heart. My rock. My dude. My ride or die. My fishbowl gangsta. Josh Jacobs is a sit this week. The Raiders are 32nd in rushing yards per game this year. 32nd! I don't know if that's due to constant bad game scripts or Josh McDaniels thinking that NFL stats are like golf, but it doesn't make any sense. And the Lions are going to have a huge revenge game this week, especially after being shellacked by Baltimore. I see eight-man boxes or single high looks all day long because the NFL's most handsome man averages less than 11 yards per completion. Less than 11 yards! He doesn't run, and he has more interceptions than touchdowns. That's Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy G, if you're nasty. Now, more than the game results, more than killing the hopes of an entire fan base, more than scuttling the franchise's best all-time passing yards quarterback, and scuttling this season's tight end five. This season's tight end five. They just got rid of him. After signing him to a st an extension, more than that, and completely negating Hunter Renfro, who two years ago was wide receiver 11 in his last full season, and he sits at wide receiver 120 right now, on top of that, and wasting Devontae Adams, the worst thing that Josh McDaniels has done is ruining last season's League rushing yards leader. Josh Jacobs averaged 4.86 yards per carry last year. 4.86 yards per carry, almost five. This year, he's averaging 2.94. I don't even need to say the 9.4 because you want to round it up to three and say, oh, it's more like three. But it starts with two point. He's third in carries. He's third in carries this season and 19th in yards. 
He's 94th in yards per carry. What are you doing? Sit my guy this week. It's the worst matchup he's going to see this year. Everything else is green or orange-ish. This is his worst defensive matchup. Um, sit Josh Jacobs. I don't know if you were watching me uh, wave the white flag since about halfway through your monogram there, but it was like a uh, monologue, sorry. Uh, but I've been waving it, and it's also a tissue as well for your... That's a monogram. For yeah, sorry. B for Booth, B for Brendan, B for Big, B for Bounded. All right, so my next sit is Alexander Madison versus the Packers. The Vikings have a really good matchup on the ground this week against the 30th ranked defense against the run, averaging 143 yards per game on the ground. This is a bold sit. However, I am not liking what I am seeing with Madison in his situation. Since Cam Akers has shown up, Madison's workload has shrunk to playing only 52% of the snaps, while last week Akers played his most snaps since joining the Vikes, playing 39% of the snaps for them, and he looked better than Madison, especially in the second half. The Vikings were willing to run with the red hand, uh, the, with the hot hand, and I think this is going to be the norm moving forward. Madison has yet to crack a 100-yard game, and the Vikings have not had a rushing touchdown to start the year yet. I think this week is the week that Cam Akers gets even more work, evening out this backfield, truly making it a 50-50 split, making Madison more of an iffy play for me. Wait till the Vikings figure out that Kenny Nwangu, Nwangu is the best Nwangu. running and Nwangu is the best running back in their running back room. Also, he just, I he's go ahead. having a hard time staying healthy. Great, great yeah. uh, special teams guy. He made the roster. Like, yeah, I mean, there's a reason why he's still on the lineup. So it should be, nice be Wong Wu and and then Ty Chandler after that, and then these veteran dart throws. Anyway, I I just want to say a, a little disclaimer. I had a bit about drinking as a Raider fan, and I don't advocate drinking as a coping mechanism. Um, also, don't drink alcohol until you're 21 in the U.S. or 18 in Canada. Anyway, so, so my next set, my last set is Brian Robinson. Brian Robinson has been slightly more efficient than Josh Jacobs this year, and you saw what that did to me. Robinson faces the Eagles this week, who are the number one defense in rushing yards allowed versus the average. And they're probably going to sack sling, sling, sling in Sammy Dots 12 to 15 times in a bad game script for the Commanders. If you see a theme in my last two sits, it's this. Capable running backs with offensive lines that are the worst. And oatmeal-brained head coaches that have no business leading NFL teams. Stop ruining my players, you dummies. Sit Brian Robinson this week. Awesome. Okay, so I think that pretty much ra wraps up Brendan's rants for the week, so that's a good thing. I mean, nope. All right. <laughs> all right, so Aaron Jones is my last sit versus the Vikings, so I got both those running backs in this game. When Jones stormed out of the gate in week one against the Bears and almost single-handedly won fantasy managers their week, Jones has since failed, fizzled right out and could be one of the biggest busts in the 2023 fantasy football season. Jones has only been able to play three games so far in 2023. Jones has not been healthy at all this year, getting ruled out many times in pregame warm-ups. Jones did not look right this past week versus the pathetic Denver Broncos run defense only scoring 7.2 half PPR points. Jones is also splitting touches evenly with AJ Dillon since returning from injury. Now Jones is up against the Minnesota Vikings defense that did a pretty decent job holding CMC in check last week. The Vikings do well against the run, only giving up an average of 105 uh, yards per game. 
in a week where there isn't any buys, I'd be looking at sitting Jones this week if I could. I don't have a choice. I have to start him. Well, yeah, I've met many Which of us. Which is why he was in my lineups last week, getting me seven points. Fair. All right. On to streamers. Let's do it. All right. My defense streaming this week, on top of the fact that I said the Lions earlier, I want to say. Um, anyway, it's the Jets. Wheels up. For the Jets. Ha <laughs> ha. That's a top gun pun. Talk to me, Goose. The Jets are going to give the Giants fits this week. They'll funnel the run. And they'll let Saquon have his day. But that'll be it. Hopefully you're starting Saquon and Brees like I am. Because it's just going to be those two guys running for days. And also grab the Jets D off the waiver wire. They're my stream of the week for defense. Love it. Yeah, the Jet, the Jets D is a great a great play this week. Uh, I have the Grindberg's defense is the Atlanta Falcons streamer of the week, uh, playing either Malik Willis or Will Levis uh, or a combination of both. Need I say more? Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, no. I mean, no. I mean, no. Sorry. No, no, no. Okay, okay. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm just gonna scroll back up to your notes earlier, and then <laughs> perfect. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes brevity is the order of the day all right for a tight end streamer this week i'm going with cole commit by a vowel i know that cole commit has been a top 10 tight end most of this year and a lot of you saw his zero targets last week and went, oh no, I got to pick up somebody off the waiver wire. And you went and you grabbed Tyler Ferguson or Luke Musgrave or somebody like that. But I'm saying stick with Komet because I admit it, I'm a teabag truther. I'm a, I'm a pageant truther. I wasn't, I wasn't until I watched all of the first quarter and a half of that debacle in Chicago last week where the Bears absolutely ripped my Raiders apart. Teabag really is good at handing off. <coughs> I wasn't a, a teabag truther, but he got me last week. The Bears faced the Chargers. The Chargers should have the lead most of this game unless they charger it and they have the worst pass defense in the NFL. Hello. That's um, Brandon Staley. I thought you were a defense guy last week. Cole Komet had zero targets, but look for the bears to attempt to include him in the more in the game plan this week and kind of pepper the ball to him. Um, I could be totally wrong on this. In that case, just wait for Justin Fields to come back because he likes Cole Komet. But I feel like teabag to Komet is going to be a thing this week. So I'm starting Cole Komet wherever I can. All right, man. Let's see what happens. I, I, I like that. I like the call. It's another bold Brandon Booth call. So it's it's going to see what happens. I love it. I love, I love you putting it out there. Um, so my tight end of the week, streamer is Taysom Hill versus the Colts. Taysom Hill has always been a goal line threat. Sprinkle in with the odd touchdown pass and now the Saints seem to be leaning on him in the past game or at least they've been in the last two games where he has earned 13 targets in that span. Taysom Hill will be a matchup dependent streamer at least until Jawan Johnson returns from injury and it looks like this week could be that week but the Colts are a good matchup ranking the 19th uh, versus the pass. So look for Hill to continue his involvement in this offense, regardless of Jawan Johnson's return. Yeah. And I mean, if I'm Dennis Allen, I'm going into the season thinking Juwan Johnson plus Derek Carr equals Jawan Johnson is a tight end one. Taysom Hill takes over after injury. And he's efficient enough. Plus, they have some wrinkle offensive plays in their playbook. And Derek Carr has never been averse to having somebody take direct snaps. He did it with Mariota when Mariota was in 
Oakland, Vegas. Um, so yeah, I, I like Taysom Hill. He's not somebody that I invested in. However, I have a fun Taysom Hill story, and it's fun depending on who you are, Dave. But I created a league this year that is only quarterbacks, defenses, and kickers. And it's a best ball, and it's the best three quarterbacks, the best, I think, three defenses, and the best six kickers in your lineup. And I have a guy I play in four leagues with. I work with him. He's great, the most racist person I know, Dave Fan, And he somehow picked up Ty, uh, Taysom Hill off the waiver wire as a quarterback, but I screwed with the scoring in this. So quarterbacks are like, they don't get points for passing. They get por- points for rushing touchdowns mm-hmm. and rushing yards and things like that. So somehow every week, Taysom Hill scores like 300 points. <laughs> And Dave randomly picked him up off waivers and he's destroying everybody in this league. And it's the funniest thing. So I hope that for Dave's sake, and I hope you're watching Dave, that Taysom Hill continues on this run. Cause with that quarterback eligibility and this like whacked out, like kickers are scoring 250 points a week. And so is Taysom Hill. <laughs> and that's mm-hmm. it. That's it. Kickers are, you know, their or defenses are scoring like their projections are all in the negative. Quarterbacks, their projections are all in like the single digits, and then <laughs> Taysom Taysom <laughs> scoring like three hundred points because of the bonuses and stuff. It's the funniest thing. So <laughs> Dave's gonna win that league. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Taysom Hill. He's a good tight end streamer this week. I love it. I enjoy your stories, man. Keep them coming. Well, I got a lot. Of that, I know you do. Well, that's about it for us. Thanks again to everyone for joining us for the weekend warm up for the Dynasty Pros Football Network. Thanks everyone for the support. We're we're always growing. We appreciate it. We appreciate the support. Please continue to like, share, subscribe, hit the whistle button. It means the world to us. Brandon, you want to remind everyone where they can find you and all your content? I think this week I'm going to, and I'm going to do a good job about it. You can find me on Twitter. I'm at Big Boned, B-I-G-B-O-O. It's right there. At Big Boned FFB. My weekly sub stack. It's a newsletter. It's linked in my Twitter profile, so you can find it there. I do more starts and sits than this. My Devi Battles and Dynasty Dilemmas can be found at dynastyprosfootball.com backslash author backslash bigboned. I also write for playerprofiler.com. And I have huge things coming up. So tune in to my Monday Meltdown. It's called the Monday Meltdown on Monday next week. You'll hear all about what's coming down the pike for me. That's on my YouTube channel. It's called The Fantasy Burn. It'll be at Big Boned FFB on YouTube. Or you can just go into the search and search Monday Meltdown and you'll find it because it'll be like the third search result. If you like my stories, and I've got a lot of them, sometimes the Monday Meltdown is just me telling stories for two, three hours. Also... I'm I'm kidding. That's it. Find me there. Okay, man. And then you can find me on Twitter or X at FFCanuck99 and all my written content at DynastyPros.com. So thanks, everybody, for joining us again. I uh, hope you guys dominate this week in your leagues. Have a great weekend, everyone. Yeah, I hope you win. <laughs>